Get it big, get it here. Listen to all your life mixes, live radio programs, and live entertaining and news package programs right here from GTR Ghana Talks Radio. We are GTR Ghana Talks Radio. GTR News. The news. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news. Right here on GTR. GTR. Good day. This is the afternoon news on Ghana Talks Radio, and I welcome you to it. My name is Sandra Asante. Top stories. Hana Tete has been appointed as Horn of Africa's special UN envoy. Also, AFFA urges the police to arrest and prosecute Hana Bissiu over the warlike comment. On the international front, 18 people had been killed in a dead militant attack. There's more stories coming up after the break. Stay tuned. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news. Right here on GTR. GTR. You're most welcome back from the break to very first story. Police in the greater Accra region have thwarted an attempted robbery attack on a billion van at the North Industrial Area. Three bystanders had been hit by the astray bullet. The Ghana Police Service says the suspects are being pursued by the anti-robbery teams. The service has asked police to vol- the public to volunteer useful information that will lead to the arrest of the culprit. This attack comes a month after the police officers were shot and killed by armed robbers at Jamestown in a car in a robbery attack on a billion van last year. The Ghana Police Service has threatened to withdraw at services if the banks fail to provide them with the necessary logistics to protect its men. The incident thus triggered a number of reforms, including the provision of standard bulletproof van for the carton of money, as well as police and military escorts. To our next story, formal Foreign Affairs Minister Hana Sewa Tete has been named by the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres to be his special envoy for the Horn of Africa. She is to see the Patafil Unanga Ayanga of Gabon to whom the Secretary General reiterates his deep gratitude and appreciation for his dedicated service. On the webpage of the United Nations Secretary General, he stated that Ms. Tete brings to this position decades of experience at the national, regional, and international levels, including well earned skills in building consensus among stakeholders, which will allow her to strengthen the partnership between the United Nations and countries in the Horn of Africa, as well as the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. In the area of peace and security, she served since 2019 as a special representative of the Secretary General to the African Union and the head of the United Nations Office of the African Union. Prior to that, she served as the Director General of the United Nations Office at Nairobi. Still on local stories, the National Executive Committee of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC, has resolved to temporarily suspend at seven weeks strike action to engage with government. This comes on the back of the announcement by the teachers group that it had agreed to call off the strike. This was announced by UTAC during the press conference in Accra. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the meeting, the neck of UTAC resolved to heed to the pleas of the eminent leaders, the parliament. Parliamentary Select Committee on Education and other stakeholders to temporarily suspend the strike action up to 4th of March 2022 to engage with the employer. This follows the National Executive Committee grant meeting held on Monday, February 21st, 2022 to deliberate on the ongoing industrial action. The UTAC President, Professor Solomon Nunu, said the roadmap has been agreed upon between the association and government as well as the association is looking forward to change of salary increments. If they will, they will continue to strike. In the next of UTAC held an emergency meeting on Monday, 21st February 2022 at the University for Professional Studies, Accra, to deliberate on the way forward regarding the withdrawal of teaching and related services on the various campuses of the public universities. Following this, members evaluated the entire strike action with a dream of reaping the full benefit of improving the conditions of service of its members. The neck of UTAC also considered the impact of our industrial action on our students and appeals that came from student groups like NUCS, USAC, GRASAC, 
and also the general public, especially parents and respected eminent leaders, including former President J. Kufo, Chancellor of University of Mines and Technology, Takwa, Sir Sam Juna, Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, and the National Security Minister, who came in on behalf of the President, and also the Parliamentary Select Committee on Education. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the meeting, the neck of Utah resolved to heed the pleas of the eminent leader of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Education and other stakeholders to temporarily suspend the strike action up to 4th March 2022 to engage with the employer. For this, we call on the government to take advantage of this window to help improve the salary and work, general working conditions of the university teacher. We also call on the government to see to the implementation of the several agreements that have been signed in recent times. We call on all members of UTAC also to rally behind leadership to and remain calm and resolute at this important phase of our history. In many forums, the employer has agreed with stakeholders that there is the need to improve the conditions of service of the university teachers. Thus, we are cautiously optimistic that the government will do the needful to improve the working conditions of the university teacher. We know that the government has not fulfilled its part of the bargain in many signed agreements in the recent past. However, the involvement of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Education and other eminent persons, we expect the government to carry through its promises this time round. We will, however, not hesitate to resume the suspended strike action should government renege on its commitments at the end of the stipulated period. Still on the UTAG story, the spokesperson for the Education Ministry, Kwasi Kwatin, also commended UTAG for their good faith and goodwill demonstration. He stated that he also believes all parties will resolve the outstanding issues. Opportunity to once again commend our professors, our teachers in the various universities, that is the University Teachers Association of Ghana, uh, for their demonstration of good faith and goodwill. And uh, in context, Ghana Talks Radio. As our government side, particularly the Ministry of Education, we remain committed to engaging the leadership of UTAG uh, uh, as per the roadmap that has been developed by the parties in resolving these issues amicably. And so, a step in the right direction is very progressive, and we believe that parties uh, will resolve. Lastly, Kwasi Kelly Delata, the lawyer for UTAG, said his expectation within the five days is that the communications to the general membership of UTAG will be done to see the way forward. We should give ourselves a week. We should give ourselves a week because the constitution of UTAG says that when NEC takes the decision either to call a strike or call it off, it needs to communicate this to its general membership within five days. So my expectation is that within the next five days, uh, that communication to the general membership of the Invest Teachers Association of Ghana will be done, and then we'll see the way forward. The, the release that you, uh, you came out with, they said that it will be, they are, they are willing to uh, suspend a strike for two weeks. Does that mean, will it take effect after the members have, take, have approved of the decision to suspend a strike? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, 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 and the overwhelming reason why uh, the UTAC National Executive Committee decided to call out the strike, uh, suspend, I mean, sorry, suspend, suspend the strike, is because of the intervention of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Education. Um, they, they've given them the full assurances that if the strike is suspended, they will get the parties involved, the government side especially, uh, to begin negotiations immediately on the thorny issues which are remaining. Um, on the conversation. So so we expect that to happen. And then again, I mean, these are human beings. The National Executive uh, of UTAC, the National Executive Committee, Donna they are Fox human as well. I mean, they see on the campuses every day hundreds of students who are stranded. Uh, it appears to them that this is like um, students who have been taken for granted in a movie they play no part in producing. Um, so hopefully in the, the coming week we should see um, the suspension coming to, to effect and then we wait on government to show good faith.
A group known as Alliance for Foot Soldiers Advocacy, AFFA, has called for the arrest and prosecution of the National Women's Organizer of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, Dr. Hannah Louisa Bissou, over what it says is her warlike comment. Speaking in an interview on Accra Bay's Onuya 91.5 FM on Monday, February 21st, 2022, Dr. Bissou is reported to have said that, and I quote, I will personally lead the training for this vigilante groups who will in turn serve as the bird eye for the NDC to ensure that the ballots are protected in 2024 elections. In a statement signed by its executive secretary, Mr. D.T. Atomako, that is known as Sir Obama Pokwasi, the AFFA said one of the considered view is that the above comment by the National Women's Organizer of the NDC contravenes Section 1 of the Vigilantism and Related Offenses of the Act 2019, that is the Act 909, and say must be dealt with in accordance with law. For the avoidance of doubt, Section 3 of the Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act, that is the Act 999, states 1. A person shall not directly or indirectly form, organize, or operate, or promote the formation, organization, operation, or activities of a vigilante group. Section 2 adds that a person who intervenes Section 1 comments and offends and in a liable of conviction to a term of imprisonment not less than 10 years and not more than 15 years. The advocacy group stressed that the extent that Hannah Bissou, who is a former member of the Parliament for Tano South constituency, has had promoting the formation of a delante group that has been outlawed in Ghana as a serious matter which cannot and must not be treated lightly. Spokesperson for the Ministry of Education, Chrissy Quartin, has denied there is a total food shortage in schools across the country. According to him, what is being experienced in schools across the country is merely a supply change and is a challenge, but he insists the situation is not as dire as it is being made to seem in the media. He admitted, however, that certain products, especially flour, have been in short supply for some time now and was quick to mention that the Ministry had already commenced action to solve the problems in the shortest possible time. Speaking to the media, he stated the ministry is yet to receive any formal complaint from the head of school about a total shortage of food. If you're just tuning in or watching on Facebook, this is the Afternoon News on Ghana Talks Radio. Away from the local stories, we get some business stories. In commercial transport, our road transport operators have increased transport fares by 15%. The new fare will take effect Saturday, February 26th, 2022. It includes fare for shared taxis, intracity, that is for Trotro, and intercity, that is for long distance. The transport unions wanted a 30% upward adjustment, but after a meeting with the stakeholders on Monday, 21st of February 2022, the operators agreed to a 15% increment. The chairman of the Committed Drivers Association, Charles Addo, has stated that his association was not included in the stakeholders' meeting and has expressed disapproval for the 15% increment. So meaning what? You, 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 you'll be charging 30%? They will be charging 30%. In other words, you are rejecting a 15% increment. They will reject it. They will reject it. They will reject it. B, eh? yes. and then upper east. They are taking the 30%. But isn't that unlawful, knowing that the coordinating council now says it should be 15%? Who is the coordinating council? Do they buy fuel for us? Do they buy cars for us? So who are they? So Mr. Nansu, you are not accepting a 15% increment? That's my brother. We increased our fare last time. Even Ghana Talks Radio. About two weeks ago. Have you spoken to them? I, I just spoke to the secretary to the GPLTCC. And he is of the view that because of competition, some of you might even decide to charge lower. Than the approved 50%. We don't know any competition. If you go, maybe the rickety cars are going to charge 15%. We will take 30%. Isn't that not being unlawful? What makes it unlawful? Because there's a communicator says that all of you should charge 15%. 
communicate to who? To all driver unions. It's not true. So, on we are not part of the uh, Ghana Road Transport Coordinating Council. We are not part of GPRTU. If there is a coordinating council, is GPRTU not a, uh, an organization of Why are they not uh, uh, part of uh, GRTC? Were you consulted before this meeting that came to this decision? We were not. Still on the transport increment story, on the other hand, the Secretary to the Road Transport Coordinating Council, Emmanuel Ohine Yeboah, also emphatically stated the announcement have been backing of all the unions. They came out with some percentages, which we thought was quite the last few years then, you know, it's not based on part of the scientific fact. So we have to meet them and determine what can we can do to support the industry as a whole. So this half, this decision you've taken, or this announcement that has come out, has the backing of all the unions. So yes, because the the coordinating council and the GPI are globally the largest transit operators in Ghana. We come over fifty percent, ninety percent, ninety five percent of the total operations, and. This has been uh, a forum where prices are discussed and implemented over the years for the past six years or more. I mean, it's more than even 10 years. So uh, we, have, we, have, we have done it over the years and we think we are the right people to come out to the first. And like I said earlier on, not all of them will be happy. But, well, as it stands now, that's what we have. So bear with us and work with it. Finally, the PRO for GPRTU Abasi Moro said the increment according to the group is in line with the administrative arrangement on public transport fares and in consideration of the plight of drivers, commuters and the general public. It has also cited current trends on the international market as well as the impact on domestic fuel. Uh, so we're honest, we have to look at many things, thinking about our business and thinking about the citizens as well. So this is what I will say. But by then, we have introduced something which there was no document on. We are saying we have 10% threshold. That if the fuel prices get to 10% after any upward adjustment, then of course we have to look for another uh, lower fuel prices. But by then, we included it to the current communique. We put it in it officially, whereby it has become a document that we can use any time the fuel prices from now increase by 10%. That, that will be about 8.8 .8 cities a litre. Then, yes, we will come out with an upward adjustment in lower fares. To an S business story, the security coordinator at the Metro Mass Transit Company Limited, Lawa Fusaina, has been sentenced to serve a 10-year prison term for blackmailing his former managing director, Mr. Bennett Abwachi. The second court in Accra convicted and sentenced him after he was found guilty for charges including unlawful entry and extortion after full trial. The convict was said to have planted a secret camera in the office of his former MD and used a recording to demand one million dollars back succeeded in obtaining 40,000 cities. The court proceeded over by her honor, Atlid Aboyi in handling down. The sentence said the punishment should serve as a deterrent to others. One other person mentioned as Bawa, who is said to have conspired with the convict, is being pursued by the police. On international front, 18 civilians in Niger has been killed in a militant attack in the west of the country, the government says. It said armed bandits on motorbikes attack attract transporting people between two villages in the Talaberi region. Western Niger, like neighboring Mali and Burkina Faso, has for years faced militant attacks as by the effort of international forces deployed to the wider Sahel region to fight the Islamist insurgents. Both Niger's neighbor are now half military government after army chiefs ousted civilian administration saying they have failed to tackle insurgency. 
We moved to Madagascar and a tropical cyclone Emnati made a landfall in the southwestern Madagascar on Tuesday night with a wind of 135 kilometers, raising fears of continued destruction on the already devastated island. Emnati is the fifth extreme weather event and the fourth major storm to make landfall on the Indian Ocean island nations over the past month. Previous storms have displaced thousands and killed hundreds since mid-January. The UN on Tuesday said that communities had us hit by the previous cyclone, that is the Betserai, in the early February were likely to be affected again. The authorities feared that the heavy rains, flooding and strong winds in areas of Sobatred could lead to enormous and widespread damages. The South African nation of Malawi, Mozambique and Zambia have been experiencing extreme weather as a result of the tropical cyclone Dumako over the past week. Still on international stories, three white men convicted of killing a black man in the United States of Georgia have been found guilty of federal hate crimes. Jurors found the defendant targeted Amhud Abri, 25, because of his race. Gregory McMichael, 60, says, and his son Travis, 36, and their neighbor William Bryan, 52, have already been found guilty last year of Aubrey's murder. Tuesday's verdict was over a separate set of the federal charges filed by the U.S. Justice Department. Aubrey was jogging in the coastal city of the Bantwick when he was confronted and shot dead by three men in February 2020. The jurors in the latest trial, a panel of eight white people, Three black people and one Hispanic person considered five separate federal charges and found the defendant guilty on every count. The first to involve federal hate crime statute and charged the three men with using force and threat to deprive Abri of his right to use a public street because of his race. The third count charged with men with kidnapping. The McMichaels also faced a firearm charges. Travis Michael was convicted of discharging the shotgun and his father was also convicted with brandishing a revolver. This may be sentenced uh, to life imprisonment in addition to the life sentence they received in January for Avery's murder. Scott Morrison opened his address by echoing the U.S. statement that an invasion of Ukraine has effectively uh, already begun. He strongly condemned the unprovoked and unacceptable action. Mr. Morrison also said Russia was at peak readiness to now complete a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. That is likely to occur within the next 24 hours. There have even been reports already of shelling and things of that nature could indicate that it has already begun. He added that liberal democracies needed to stand together to oppose authoritarian states seeking to have their way. To some entertainment, so the South Korean entertainment company behind K-pop band BTS has been a surge. They have seen a surge in profit, despite making less money from the concert during the pandemic. Hype says it's operating uh, profit jumped by 30.8% in the past year. The firm, which has previously named Big Hit Entertainment, also owned the music label of singers including Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. Speaking to investors on Tuesday, the Hive chief executive Park Yi Won said the company planned to carry out its game and publishing business in earnest. He said it planned to invest in game developers and provide a variety of entertainment in the soon to be unfolded metaverse. This is where I end the afternoon news on Ghana Talks Radio. Thank you so much for watching on Facebook and tuning in. You can log on to our website, www.ghanatalksradio.com for more news updates. My name is Sandra Asante. Stay tuned for the sport tidbit. Have a great afternoon.